Hello everyone, my name is Paul Thurt and today I'm going to be giving you guys something that you've asked for for a very long time. A plugin doctor tutorial, kind of. So before we go into this, right, I'm just making it clear that this is my understanding of plugin doctor and not everything may be 100% right. With that little disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the frequency side of plugin doctor, right? Um, understanding how to interpret um, frequency response and plugin doctor. The very first test that you'll get when you load plugin is the linear test. Now, I have a little bit more information about this now that I didn't have before. So, I spoke to Christian from DDMF. Now, after that kind of very quick conversation, my understanding of the linear test is that it is for plugins that do not have any distortion, no harmonics whatsoever, and they do not modulate the signal and they do not compress the signal. Basically, the input has no correlation to the output in terms of the frequency response. All the input is going to do, right, by increasing it or decreasing it, all it's going to do is increase or decrease the level, okay? So it's almost like this, right? The frequency response stays the same regardless of the input. It's just the level that's changing. Now, to kind of show this off, right, let's uh, stick in Waves RS-56 that I've covered before. A few people uh, I noticed commented um, in other places a little bit sceptical about um, me using RS-56 and showing it as a clean linear digital plugin. Now, I've already shown that there's no harmonics in the plugin, but what I'm going to show in terms of what I've just spoke about there in terms of linear and why the RS-56 gets consistent results in Plugin Doctor is due to its input. So as you can see, right, I've boosted with it, just like boosted uh, random boosts. And as you can see, as I bring up the input and bring down the input, the frequency response doesn't change. It's just the level. So by hitting the unit harder, hitting the unit softer, it does have no effect on the output. Okay, the linear frequency response stays the exact same because there's no compression in there and there's no harmonics in there. Okay, it's a completely clean digital linear plugin. So for this test to give the best consistent results, you need to feed it a plugin that has no modulation, compression, or harmonics whatsoever. Absolutely clean, and the input does not trigger any form of compression, or the input doesn't trigger anything that can change the output from the input. Okay, that's my understanding of the linear test. Now, when you've got that understanding, the next bit makes a little bit more sense in my head. Okay, so let's use the Lindell 80 channel as a reference for this. Okay. Now, as you can see, when it's gain staged, there's not much of a difference, really, okay? So gain staging is very important in terms of feeding plug-in doctor and analog emulation with non-linearities, which comes in the forms of harmonics and also compression when you really hit the THD hard as well, okay? So as you can see, the input has an effect on the linear frequency response when you hit the THD harder. Now, as you can see, increasing the THD to its max setting, right? look what happens. When it's increased to max, if I increase the input and decrease the input, the frequency response does indeed change. So when it's gain staged at like zero VU in the plugin, you can kind of see it's got this kind of like, this, it's like a high shelf, right? Now, which rolls off when you hit the input harder at zero dB, because that kind of high shelf kind of rolls off, right? And then it becomes absolutely nonsensical at like plus 10 dBFS, right? Which is an unrealistic input level, I know, but it does show the inconsistency of breaking the linear test, okay? This is breaking the test, right? By adding more distortion, right? And also compression, because the more THD you add in the pre's and the channel strips and stuff, they actually do add compression as well. So to get the best results in the linear mode, it is advisable to keep the levels gain staged and the THD as low as possible. But it still doesn't mean that the results that you see will be absolutely perfect because you are introducing some form of non-linearity via the THD. However, there is a way to get more realistic and reliable results, and that is via the Hammerstein. Now, the Hammerstein shows the full frequency range of up to seven orders of harmonics, okay? So it's different from what we are normally used to seeing in Plug-in Doctor in the harmonic section, which is just one frequency, and it shows with the harmonics of that one kind of sine tone. Now, as you can see, the bumps in the frequency response 
are due to the bump of low order harmonics, which makes sense to me, and hopefully you as well. And even with the input abused, it doesn't become erratic. And it actually looks like a readable result. Now, as you can see, when you use Hammerstein and say you just give it one order of harmonic, okay, the frequency response is going to be flat. Now, it's only until you then start bringing in more orders of harmonics and how they interact with each other, again, impacts the linear frequency response. Now, the main problem that I can personally see with this test is you can see the result of the frequency response depends on the amount of harmonics added. Now, the problem to me with this specific plugin and a lot of other plugins is that a lot of plugins make more than seven orders of harmonics. Some don't, but in this instance, this plugin does make more than seven orders of harmonics, right? Which can be pretty loud. Okay, don't just assume that after seven orders of harmonics, um, the harmonics get quieter. As you can see here, um, it's mainly odd harmonics that the Lindell uh, plugin adds. And actually, when you add in your seventh order harmonic, it is pretty high. So the way I see it, in my head, you're not seeing the full picture of the frequency response as you're only seeing seven orders of harmonics and how seven orders of harmonics affect the frequency response. Now, there is a third measurement of nonlinear frequency response, which I only found out from Christian from DDMF himself. And that comes in the form of the harmonic section. Now, in the harmonic section, if you go to sweep and then you move to fundamental, you will see a sweep now, as you can see, I set this at minus 18 dB full scale. And as you will see, it takes a little bit of time for it to create that frequency curve. The time it takes um, is dependent on a few factors, processing power being one of them. Okay, So as you can see, um, it has a low bump in there, which to me is consistent with the Hammerstein. Right? Zero dB doesn't go nuts at full THD. Same with the input at 10 dB full scale. Right? However, the same can't be said for the linear test. Right? The linear test is absolutely all over the shop. Now, for me, this is where kind of uh, I kind of struggle with the black and white. It's a little bit of a grey area. Some people may interpret the Hammerstein and the fundamental sweep differently. Okay, and another thing I'll mention very quickly is that the um, the curves all look slightly different because the uh, the graph itself is slightly different. So the frequency plot will look a little bit different. Okay, just in case you're like that doesn't really look exactly the same. That's why. Now, in my opinion. What I'm seeing in the fundamental sweep kind of relates to what I'm seeing in the Hammerstein, and I'm kind of tying the two of them together. Um, for me, the fundamental sweep makes more sense when I see what's going on in the Hammerstein. So in my opinion, the two of them do correlate quite well, and I'm going to take a guess, and then this is a guess, that the fundamental sweep is all of the harmonics, the entire frequency range of the harmonics. I can't say it for sure, but that's my guess, right? That's my guess. Now, another reason why I feel that the fundamental sweep may be showing consistent results as well is when you hit it and feed it with compression. Now, to kind of give a little bit more context to this, I'm going to use the Tone Empire Model 5000 because it's got saturation and it's got compression. I can't remember which is which. I think it's SSL compression with like an API transformer or op amp or whatever it is, or it may be the other way around. I know it's like a blend of SSL and DPI. So I've got saturation and compression. So I'm going to use this as a little bit of a test to try and give a little bit more context to how I'm understanding what I'm seeing in the fundamental sweep. Now, as you can see, the Tone Empire is quite a kind of a flat frequency response when it's not compressing. When it is compressing, what you'll notice is that there is a little bit, like of a high mid bump, kind of mid to high bump in there, okay? So it is changing, right? The compression is changing the frequency response. Now, why do I have a suspicion that what I'm seeing may be correct? Now, if we move to the Hammerstein, what we can see is that when the compressor is engaged and it's actually compressing, it does make more harmonics, which kind of makes a little bit of sense because in the fundamental sweep, we can see that when the compressor is active, so maybe like 5 to 7 dB compression, we are getting a little bit of a bump in like the mids and the high end. Again, this is all kind of guesswork for me. I can't say for 
fact, right? None of this is fact, it's all my interpretation. As you can see, I'm trying to correlate everything. I'm trying to like, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle and I'm trying to see how each element kind of pieces together so it can give me a better understanding of what I'm seeing. So what we've seen there are kind of like my tests to kind of prove to myself and my belief that the fundamental sweep is actually a very good representation to use when using like a non-linear style plugin, like an analog emulation that has forms of compression in THD. Now, one last feature that I found just when I was mucking about, which might be quite handy for you, is testing oversampling, okay? And that's another part of like frequency response. And it's quite cool. Now, before we end, I'll just show you this quickly, okay? So as you'll notice, with the Lindel, right, when you put the oversampling on, what you'll notice is that in the harmonics, it filters out the highs, right? It rolls off the high order harmonics. So as you can see, it's a massive filter, okay? It's a massive low pass filter. It's rolling off the highs, so it's rolling off the highs of the frequency response and also the highs of the harmonics. Now, that's very, very common, and you'll know this already, but it's still quite handy to be able to see it because the good thing is when you're using the fundamental sweep, you can see it as well, how it goes to like, but without oversampling, I'll just go straight to Nyquist. But what's cool with the um, fundamental sweep and the oversampling, you actually see, you actually see the low pass filter, which is quite cool. However, when I was looking at the Tone Empire plugin, I thought I was going to do the same thing. And I found, which I love stuff like this, is geeky, that they are doing something different and possibly loads of other developers do this as well. Now, before I show you, right, this is just kind of in my head how this works, okay? So what I think, and again, it's not concrete, right? What I think that they're doing, that with oversampling off, they've picked a level of like higher order harmonics that's just enough not to create audible aliasing. And then what they do is, every time they add in more, like they oversample, I think like they increase Nyquist and they widen the frequency spectrum, it then allows them to add more saturation each time they widen the frequency spectrum. And then each time you oversample, it just keeps on adding more saturation and more saturation because it can, because it's widening the frequency spectrum each time, which is kind of like widening Nyquist. Nyquist is getting higher in the frequency range, thus there is no aliasing. And that's what I'm thinking, because that's what I'm seeing. As you can see, with every oversampling move that you do, you get a bump in harmonics. There's no filters going on. You can see it's going right up to Nyquist. But every time you oversample, it increases, like the high-mid saturation. So it saturates more every time you oversample. So in my head, the best sound is going to be at max oversampling because at that point, you actually are getting the most saturation out of the plugin, which is what I would imagine would be the intended result from Tone Empire. And this massively differs from Lindell because the Lindell saturation stays the exact same. It's just, boom, it's got a filter on it. Saturation is the same, but it filters. Right, like times two, times four, times eight, blah blah blah. And in terms of that filter, um, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I just know that the more harder you hit the lindle, you may need um, higher orders of oversampling, depending on how hard you hit it. Right? I, I don't know enough. And that is how I normally think that plugin developers do it. But in Tone Empire's case, they didn't do that. I can see there's. It doesn't look like there's any filter. I can see it from the Hammerstein, and I can see it from the Fundamental Suite that there's no filtering going on but the saturation is increasing, which is quite clever because in the Lindell, you'll get audible alias and there's no way around it unless you oversample it. Where Torn Empire has kind of been quite crafty and thought, no, what we'll do, we'll just like add in as much saturation as you need for it to not alias. And then in terms of us giving you more saturation, you need to oversample it, which will cost you more CPU. But if you want that kind of analog saturation sound, then I'll hit your CPU and you've got to make that decision. But in a sense, you're not really losing on quality by not using the oversampling. You're not getting as much saturation, but you're still getting saturation, but you're not getting any aliasing. I mean, you're still getting a little bit of saturation. That's what is in my head. That's what I'm seeing. And that's what I'm correlating what I'm seeing. And that there that you've just seen is kind of like what I do to test plugins. I cannot give a concrete conclusion because in the end, I'm trusting the analyzer, right? That 
I think I'm getting more consistent results, but I can't say for sure. But what I can say is that I've seen this in an analyzer and this is kind of what I see. And from this analyzer, this is the results that I've got. I'm not going to base my conclusions 100% on this, but that is what the analyzer says. And in a sense, guys, that's kind of how I'm going to see Plugin Doctor now on. Plugin Doctor isn't as easy as I thought, right? It isn't as easy as I thought. The linear test, I think, as I've shown and as Dan showed and talked about in a previous video, that the linear test is a linear test, which in Plugin Doctor land is no distortion, like no compression, or anything where it involves the input triggering something that then affects the frequency response of the output. The linear test can be broken. We've shown it, I mean, I think we can summarise, hopefully, that um, the test can be broken, and Dan was right, and that if you feed it too much um, non-linearity, like distortion or compression, then you are going to start breaking the test and get inconsistent results. The Hammerstein is going to give you more consistent results, but in my opinion, I think the reason why the fundamental sweep is there is because the Hammerstein only gives you up to seven orders of harmonics. So it can only be trusted to a certain point. So if, say if there's a plugin that like only maybe makes like four or three or four orders of harmonics, like SSL Fusion would probably be a good one. Then yeah, the Hammerstein would probably give you very consistent results. Um, the fundamental sweep is a hard one for me because in my head, I can't say it for sure, but in my head, fundamental sweep is the most realistic um, representation of a plugin's frequency response being fed through non-linear and parts of a plugin in DSP form, compression, distortion, or modulation, or anything like that. But in this case, distortion and um, compression. I do think that what I see in the Hammerstein and in the fundamental sweep kind of closely correlate together. So I can't say for 100% sure that what we see in the fundamental sweep is like absolutely um, correct. But when I did speak to Christian from DDMF, in the email he did say that the fundamental sweep, and I, I might maybe be taking this out of context, but the way I took it was that the fundamental sweep kind of caters for like all non-linearities. That's the way I took it. Um, I'll put, I'll stick it here, right? I'll stick it. That's what he said. Okay, take that as you will. Okay, take that as you will. Okay, so that's kind of as much as I understand about kind of frequency response of plugins and how to use it and how to use certain parts of plugin doctor and how to interpret certain elements and how to use them to get a better picture of what a plugin is doing. So if you like the video please like the video because this stuff takes time. Remember, Dundee and Angus College, okay, I do work fucking five days a week. I've only got a short amount of time to do the YouTube stuff, remember? So please like the video if you appreciate the effort that I put in. Consider subscribing if you've not subscribed. My name's Paul Third, and hopefully I'll see you again next week on Mixing Wednesdays.